Welcome everyone to Ocean Cadence. Today we will be discussing the topic of main engine lube oil system. That is how the lubrication oil is transferred through the lines of the main engine system and then how the lubrication is carried out in the main engine. So let us start. As we all know that the main engine lube oil some tank is the place where the entire main engine system lube oil is present. So basically this some tank becomes a reservoir for the oil supply to the main engine. To pour fresh oil into the sump tank, we have a dedicated main engine lube oil storage tank or in some ships we also have segregated storage tanks as well as transfer tanks or service tanks. So the nomenclature might be different but the end purpose is that these tanks are used to put fresh oil into the main engine lube oil sump tank. Once the oil is into this sump system, it is considered as that amount of oil which is already into the system and hence logged accordingly. Now from here the main engine lube oil pumps which are basically submersible type centrifugal pumps will draw suction and then send this oil further. From here this oil goes into the main engine lube oil cooler. On most ships you will find out that due to the sheer size and the nature of the system it will be sea water cooled but on certain ships it can be fresh water cooled also. So there is no general thumb rule but the sea water cooled system is more common. After the lube oil has lost the amount of heat that it has gained through its previous entry into the system and thereafter coming back into the sump tank, then the oil moves further after losing this heat. From here it can go to two places, one is the backwash filter and one is the bypass filter. Now under normal running condition what happens is that my oil has to pass through the backwash filter and this backwash filter can periodically be automatically backwashed that is back flushed or it can be manually backwashed as well. In parallel the oil can also pass through the sludge checker and return manually to the sump tank. At certain points when let's say during critical operations if my filter system pressure becomes low all of a sudden in the backwash side then I have the provision of the second line as discussed that is the bypass filter through which the oil can pass and join the main line. Once the oil has passed through this system, it will go into the distribution manifold. From the common manifold, the oil will go to a number of places and lubricate the different bearings and different parts of the main engine. For example, the oil will go into the crankpin side, the crosshead side as well as the main bearing side. In different constructions, what you will find is that sometimes there might be a telescopic pipe or sometimes there might be an articulate arm depending upon whether the engine is of man BMW or Sulzer and these designs are also prominent by different names for other manufacturers such as Mitsubishi and other engine manufacturers. But what the idea is that once this oil passes through the common manifold, it has to go to lubricate the crosshead. The oil when it reaches the crosshead will lubricate the lower end that is the crosshead bearing shell and then travel up and also a certain amount of oil will pass through the piston rod into the piston side and this oil will do two different jobs one is the cooling of the piston and removal of the heat that is being gained during the combustion process into the piston and also lubricate the different moving parts within the system. Now the second part is that after lubricating the crosshead bearing some part of the oil will also move towards the downside that is the bottom end bearing or what we regard as the crank pin bearing. So the drill passage in the corn rod will allow the oil to pass towards the lower side and thereby lubricate the bottom end bearing. For main bearing the line passing from the common manifold will be completely different and hence the pressure maintained at the main bearing should not get affected that is why this line is completely different because the quantity and the flow required for the lubrication of main bearing is very important and the pressure required is very important. Also as already addressed that because of the telescopic pipe and the articulate arm design and primarily of importance is that for uh, man BMW and Sulzer the crosshead designs differ where there is a gutter in the uh, first and there is no gutter in the second design and hence you will also see that the crosshead lubrication pressure that is the lube oil pressure at the crosshead would be different for man BMW and for Sulzer. So for Sulzer it will be predominantly higher and what you will find on board is crosshead lubricating oil pumps that is crosshead lubrication pumps. So again in the system on the top side of the engine that is the piston side as I already told that the oil has gone up lubricating the inside parts of the piston removing the heat and thereby would then travel down through the return passage and again go back into the sump in the form of drained oil for the system. 
Now, in contrast to the four-stroke engine, this oil has nothing to do with the lubrication of the liner in our two-stroke system that is the main propulsion engines because over here what we have is a different cylinder lubrication system where the source of oil, the pumps, the lubricator, everything is completely different. So over here the oil is not performing the action of liner lubrication. As over here we can see that the cylinder lube oil tank will provide oil through the filters and through the heater cooler arrangement simultaneously uh, as per the requirement of your trade routes for example under cold routes you need a heater and under normal routes you might need a cooler. So it will go further and it will go to the cylinder lubricator and then the cylinder lubricator system will further help the controlled pulse lubrication of the cylinder. In older generation engines which are still sometimes sailing and prevalent you will also find that this automatic or pulse or time lubrication is not there. What exists is the manual lubrication system where you will find the capillary and the manually turning camshaft and gear arrangements which help the lubrication. So as already discussed now the oil which has returned into the sump via the return line and all the splashing of the and the draining of the oil will then be again circulated into the system as a virtue of the circuit discussed earlier. Some part of oil which is lost during the lubrication and the transfer process and collected in the underside of the piston area and also which is there for the lubrication of stuffing box and for different roles will thereby be present in the drain side and then will go into the drain line and from there it can be drained into the scavenge drain tank. So it is of primary importance that our scavenge drain line that is the line leading from the scavenge under piston area until the scavenge drain tank should be lined up in such a way that the draining is taking at periodic time intervals. It should not be stopped because what it will do is it will flood the under piston or the scavenge space and it is of a high fire risk as well as it will affect your engine in a lot of different ways creating hot spots and other problems. So the lineup has to be particularly correct. As we also know that this oil that is coming through the entire lubrication system needs to be cleaned so as to be reusable. So it is not only possible for the filter to remove all the particulate matter and definitely not possible to remove the water content. So that is why there is a lube oil purifier that is the main engine lube oil purifier which draws suction from the main engine lube oil sump tank and also returns the oil into the main engine lube oil sump tank. The lineup can be arranged differently where the suction can be drawn from a storage tank and, and put into the sump tank or vice versa but the common lineup is from sump tank to sump tank. Now this water that I am talking about being removed is not because of any mixing of water into the oil because there is no direct contact between the water and the oil in a main engine lubricating interface. But what happens is that due to the higher temperatures, due to the precipitation and due to condensation, a lot of water that is present into the atmosphere will condense and it will settle down on the walls and subsequently get into the system and thereby contaminate it. And other similar sources of negligible contamination are present. So to remove this water as well is the job of the purifier. Also in the modern engines you will find out that the scrape down analysis is a periodical routine that is carried out. So for that we have a different line that is responsible and available for us to draw the samples and carry out the scrape down analysis and if a permanent assembly or a system is installed the walls will be aligned in a way that you can directly draw the oil into the system and test. Also over here as we can see the oil which was discussed earlier that is the piston cooling oil that was going on top. So the return line is allowing the oil to go back into the sump separately. So this is one thing you will also find in the high pressure designs as discussed earlier for certain types of engine. I hope that the different aspects of a main engine lubricating oil system are now clear to you. Please do make sure to share our videos with your colleagues and subscribe to our channel and help us grow together. Thank you.